Hello, my name is Ashley Marquette, and I will be presenting my undergraduate senior thesis for Carthage College uh, Physics Department. The senior thesis is to model attitude determination and control of a 3U CubeSat in low Earth orbit or LEO. Now, first things first, we have to uh, describe what a CubeSat is, and I wouldn't really say it's a certain uh, mission oriented satellite, it's more of a set of restrictions. CubeSats are separated into U's or units, and each U has a dimension restriction of 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters and a volume restriction of 1.3, 1.5, between 1.3 and 1.5 kilograms. And we could stack units on top of each other to create a 1U or a 2U, 3U, 6U, or even up to a 12U. So they kind of vary in size between classification of uh, PICO satellites and nano satellites. In my hand right here, I have a 3D printed uh, 3U skeleton. As you can see, it's about the size of a loaf of bread. Now, the advantage, advantage of a CubeSat is its cost efficiency. They usually cost a sliver of what a uh, like a nine nine meter satellite or a three meter satellite with the same functionality goes into space. But there, as previously stated, they do have restrictions on volume and mass, and that also relates to restrictions on power. There's a lot of subsystems that go into a cube satellite, and not a lot of space for solar paneling, or actuators, or sensors, or control panels, or batteries. So everything's limited, even if the technology can match our current restrictions. And this is where I'm going to go a little detail of where I'm going to focus my model on, the canopy CubeSat or the uh, Canopy Near Earth, Near Infrared Observing Project, um, Canopy for short. A Canopy CubeSat is a 3U CubeSat which has a mission goal of using a consumer off-the-shelf device, a Cox camera, to take pictures of uh, Earth's forest using, uh, I believe, eight spectral bands at the current uh, stage of the process. Now, our Canopy CubeSat immediately has some interesting and unique things about it. First of all, it's set in a horizontal orientation or where the uh, long surface is facing the Earth and this Earth and a deer or the, uh, or the zenith. And its uh, propagation along the orbital track will be aligned with short surfaces. So that immediately creates some interesting uh, issues for attitude determination or control or making sure that several systems are pointing where they need to be when they need to be, like the camera facing down or the S-band facing down or the GPS facing uh, not the Earth. So that's our specific scenario that we're going to be focusing on for this particular model. Next step is to explain attitude. Attitude is the, is the spacecraft's orientation along its orbital track. So, the satellite could be any which way direction along, as long as it's on the right path. It could be horizontal the way we want it, or it could be vertical, or it could be tumbling, or it could be tumbling about the yaw axis as well. We want to prevent that in order to make sure that systems do what they need to do when they need to do it. So that is what attitude is, but we need to determine it and control it. The first step is attitude determination. How do we achieve this? Well, we use, we create vectors through sensor data. And these vectors can tell us a little bit about its, the rotation of our satellite. It's, the image up here shows a rotation plane with its rotation axis, the normal. And uh, this vector right here, P1, can be like a sensor data. Let's say it's like a sun sensor, a magnetometer. It could give us information about how our satellite has, has rotated about its axis. And we could use various methods like the uh, cross product method, which is, uses two sets of sensor data and uh, does some cross products and whatnot. Or we could use the Kalman filter, which is just an update to matrices in time with various sensor data.
Now I keep on bringing sensors, but let's do some examples of what typical sensors are found on CubeSats. This next one is talks has images on the Earth Horizon sensors. The goal of Earth Horizon sensors is to use four thermophiles, um, pretty much uh, lenses that uh, convert infrared radiation, thermal energy, into electrical pulses, which we could therefore read as shown in this image right here. It works off the basis that the Earth absorbs and emits a lot more infrared radiation compared to its own horizon as well as space. So if we have multiple thermophiles uh, with the Earth partially within their field of view, we could determine which, where the Earth is by where the highest uh, reading is, as shown in this image right here. The Earth's center output value is about 1200. About 1200. Horizon about 600 and the space reference close to zero. So we could compare and contrast that to create one of three vectors, one of two vectors we could use for our attitude estimate. Other sensors do include the magnetometer, which measures the magnetic field, the Earth's magnetic field out in space. Think of it like a space compass and a 3D space compass, as well as coarse sun sensors placed on solar panels that determine the location of the sun at any time by panel illumination and by the amount of volt voltages being carried through each panel. So great, we have we know we have an estimate of where we are. The next step is to actually control or apply torques to the satellite. And how do we achieve this? Through uh, systems of actuators. The image right here is one type of actuator, the reaction wheel. They work on the basis of the conservation of angular momentum. They are attached to the ADCS, which is attached to the satellite, and, will rot and so those wheels will rotate to store all the satellite's angular momentum within the wheels. So when we choose to accelerate them in a certain direction, that will produce a necessary torque to reorient our spacecraft. These are an active uh, actuator and particularly the primary actuator for most satellites. However, they do run a high risk of mechanical failure, so typical CubeSats will have two sets of actuators. The second set of actuators are magnetorquers. They are basically solenoids that produce a magnetic field that will interact with the Earth's magnetic field, and therefore producing another not as strong torque as the uh, reaction wheels, but enough to produce a force to reorient our satellite, as well as provide an opportunity to desaturate the momentum wheels as they continue going. So we have these two systems, attitude determination and attitude control, that work in tandem to make sure our satellite is in the right position. However, testing these, si these situations for our satellite to make sure that they're the right place after deployment or after a couple days in orbit is rather hard to do because of conditions of microgravity and low Earth, Earth orbit along with other things. So the goal of this is to model attitude determination and control through uh, several computer programs that kind of estimate how long does it take for the satellite to reorient itself. What surfaces do we have to worry about? Which ones are easier to control about which axes? So my goal is to use a current program, like Princeton Attitude Determination and Control Program, and update it to match the requirements of the Canopy CubeSat. Right here on the image, on the screen, you will see an example of one of the uh, grass uh, grass functions produced by this by this program. However, this is just for a normal case where it uses just a, a stable a unit quaternion. Now what quaternions are, and what most uh, space satellites use, is just a new met a method of determining its attitude by using a rigid body as a movable axis within, let's say, a hypersphere, a 4D sphere. So this is what this is showing. We've got several lines, several parts showing uh, attitude to attitude control determination placement about the x, y, and z as well as s. Now s is just an imaginary constant with, as a part of quaternions. Again, this is just a basic 
it's a vertical oriented CubeSat model with a unit quaternion, so this really doesn't apply to the canopy CubeSat. My goal is to update or change this program to match our given parameters and also help us determine the tumbling time and overall lifespan. What could we expect from the AD our provided ADCS for the canopy CubeSat to prevent as low prevent um, mortality? And that is our current situation. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Uh, uh, I really should have a slide. Anyways, and goodbye. <laughs>